I understand that you have given this film your stamp of approval. Oh, I, I certainly have. I think they've done an incredible job. They were very, very religiously careful about uh, making it real, very real. W what was your first reaction after seeing it for the first time? Well, you know, I was part of it because I was there uh, while they were filming and I had a lot of input prior to it. So I was just being very gratified. It's kind of an out of this world experience to see your life, you know, going in front of you there in a very crucial moment in our, my brother Bob and my life. Because uh, if, if not for the fact that Mrs. Travers said yes, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be here talking about Mary Poppins anymore. You, you were uh, a, consult, a consultant, consultant on the film. Yes, I was, I was a music consultant. I, but I did a lot of explaining of how it was and how Walt was and how Mrs. Travers was with us and everything. It was all very authentic. It's all, it was an ordeal, to tell you the truth. She was not a very nice lady. Is that overstating it? I would call it? her a wounded lady. She was, she was very hurt as a little girl, disappointed and disillusioned in life, and was on the defense of the rest of his life, her life. We didn't know this at the time. Of course, how could we know this? All we knew was she was very, very negative, <laughs> very difficult. And it was an ordeal, really. It meant so much to us to get this film made. It meant so much to Walt. He was, it was a dream of his for 18 years. And finally, he got an option, you know. And then Bob and I got involved with Don DeGrati, this wonderful writer and artist. And the three of us cobbled together this, this idea for how to tell the movie, musically. And Walt was very high on it. He loved it. He, but he confessed to us, now I've got to get the author to say yes. And we didn't know what we were in for. <laughs> and is there a way to sum up how you come up with that great music? That it's iconic music now. Oh, thank you. Well, at the time it was just a, we decided let, let's write a score that sounds like at the turn of the century England because uh, those books were written in mid thirties in England. And there at that time, England had no stamp of music. It was no, style that was English. It was very American. They used to play American pop songs for the most part. But back in the turn of the last century, there was a music hall style, a wonderful style, and we said, let's write it that way, that style. So that's how we got Super Cal, and that's how we got Jolly Holiday, and Spoonful of Sugar, and, and Feed the Birds. They all sounded like folky English songs, and that's what we wanted to do. And did you have to get uh, Mrs. Travers' approval of these songs? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We did have to get her approval, and she didn't approve of anything. She, <laughs> she said, how do you, what is this nonsense word? I said, it's a nonsense word, it's fun. And she said, well, it doesn't make any sense, it isn't a real word. I said, I know, but, and now it's in the better dictionaries, I'll have you know. When you're doing this, she insisted that there's a tape recording uh, going on of the creative meetings. Did you go back and listen to some of those tapes? I could honestly tell you this, I never wanted to hear them again. I lived it, I heard it, and once in a while I, I knew the tapes were there and I heard them, bits of them, but I couldn't stomach listening to all that. But when they were doing the research, when Kelly Marcel and, and all the people involved in this picture were doing the research, getting ready for it, they listened to it. 16 hours of the grueling Mrs. Chatters, yes. And she was not too uh, encouraging to us. We finally got to her a little bit, toward the end, but it was difficult. But then it paid off because the, the movie was a huge success. Oh yeah, it was, it was Walt's magnum opus. He was very proud of it. It was all the tricks in his bag. He pulled them together and he had this wonderful uh, device where put, you put humans into animated sequences in the, in the Jolly Holiday sequence. He was very proud of that. It's a new process it's called a sodium vapor process where you filmed the actors against a, a plain sodium screen. It was very interesting. Made in Hollywood.